Hello, welcome to another episode of Cloud Security Podcast from AWS Reinforce. And today I'm with Rodrigo, but because he's Brazilian, I'm asking him to do an introduction for Rodrigo in Portuguese. So, a, a Portuguese introduction, then followed by an English introduction. How, so, if you can introduce yourself to the audience. Okay. Uh, meu nome é Rodrigo, eu trabalho na Temp Security no Brasil. Uh, a maioria do tempo eu trabalho com a parte de engenharia de detecção e estou tentando fazer uma pesquisa na parte de resposta a incidentes na AWS. All right, it's in English. In English, yeah. All right. That was great, gracias. My, my, name, my name is Rodrigo. My, my handle is Spooker Labs at Twitter. Uh, I do threat detection and incident response for and research for Tempest Security in Brazil. And we start to do some some stuff that we're probably going the part of the talk here, like to try to achieve some good results in detection with AWS. And what got you into cloud security? How, what was your path into it? All right. Uh, I started mostly like 20 years ago or more, like getting old. And and with Linux, sees the main stuff, infrastructure, and so I start. I think I, I used to test all the products, everything. So I kind of I move it to security somewhere in my career, like because I used to do fire stuff and trillion detection. Yeah. And it was natural. I move it to and so in three years ago, like they start a company in Brazil called Tenti Security that's main focus on the on cloud security, and so they pushed me to there, and so I start to focus my my time on the cloud, like the last three years, mostly. Right, and we're talking about detection engineering as well. A lot of people may not have the context of what a detection engineer is. Okay. What do you call, like, in your mind, when someone says de detection engineer, what is that? Okay, uh, I think when we're talking about the tech engineer, you have some points that, and it's pretty hard to to separate mostly, like because first uh, you you need to understand the, the threat modeling, like where the attacker is and where your asset, your most valuable asset are, and so like you have the path, like for an attack, and so in this path you probably have a lot of points that you have data source, mm -hmm. and those data source provides visibility, and so like when you have visibility, you try to create detection. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the very first beginning for a uh, threat detection engineer guys have success on the on the on the results of their job like you must have you must be sure that you have the visibility the data source. Yeah. And so on top of that you start the real fun because like first you need the, the data source. And so you start figuring out like now what I I can detect with those data source. Could be one, two, three, a couple yeah. of them. And so some are easier to figure out some are more complex and so with that we create the detections and other detection we still have some problem like you need to have the incident response playbook yeah need to have the remediation actions how you solve that and, and so it's it's a very how can i say a, a very complete area that everybody needs to work together very close like detection engineer is part of this process yeah yeah and if any point of this process is not working correctly uh, so it's not trigger the attacker and this kind of thing. Yeah, and to your point, I guess we spoke when we spoke about this offline, we spoke about the whole proactive nature of this field as well. Why do, why do these people need to be proactive? Yeah, uh, I think uh, one, one thing that as a detection engineer, as an incident response, like most of the time we work like doing some detections for someone else research. Yeah, like yeah. mostly the offensive guys they do this and then do that and and so you say okay i need to detect that and so now you have cv for that so i need to detect that and this kind of thing and most of this work is from offensive research like yep, yep. exploit research and when uh and and, so, and 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 to be proactive it's pretty difficult in some data source for example endpoint endpoint is pretty difficult because they could do the same thing in a lot of different ways and the research like to to figure out that is more complex but when i i move it to cloud and start to look more on the 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 data source for for cloud yeah i, I saw that we could do some things because the the data event is the same for every company like yeah. the cloud trail for example for aws is mostly the same like yeah. the, the event name everything is the same like doesn't matter like how the 
the if the how the actions happen like if it came like from uh, ISDK a two or AWS CLI or user the console yeah. it's the same by the end of the day yeah and so yeah. I figured out like okay uh, I think you could try to do some research and try to be not ahead because I don't know if they are using it because yeah yeah I will come back to a problem like if you have visibility it's a, the first the first step like we'll you, you need to have detection that's and right. so like I I think they are not not using why I'm researching but since we mostly don't have detection for that yeah. I don't know maybe they are uh, using already actually you're right because technically you can't get visibility if you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know what you're looking for unless you do detection controls yeah. if you don't have detection rules for it um, and maybe I think because yesterday we spoke to Houston and we kind of spoke about the whole EC2 SV bucket and something that you've been researching is the app stream space as well. Yeah, yeah. What is app stream for people who don't know what Amazon app stream is? Yeah, and, and, and this mindset uh, it started like uh, I was on a call uh, with uh, incident response. Yeah. And so the customer told us that they have some incident response, incident problem uh, with an app stream that has a, a rule attached. And so, like, when I, I was on the call, my, my, first, my first thing was, what is app stream? So, <laughs> I'll figure out, like, and my second thing was, if he was our customer, yep. was I going to the tags? And I figured out, uh-oh, no. And so, it would be a kind of false negative recall when you don't have visibility. Yep. And so, I, I started figuring out, okay, I will take a look at that and see, like, what I, I, where I, get, I got from here, I, I will get from here. And the result was really interesting. Really? Yeah, the result is really interesting. I, uh, I, I would love to go on into it. Go oh, into okay. it. Yeah, yeah. And because because we start to because the first the first the first step was like I need to understand how AppStream works because I have no idea what is AppStream. Yeah. And so the and so I start to look on the documentations. Yeah. And so the documentation say AppStream provides like application as a service like the Citrix meta frame in the past like. Oh right. Okay. Right. You want to run just this piece of application on you have a legacy product you, you build here and so you just provide that application. And so, oh, so you just provide the application, it runs it for you. Like, it's, it's kind of like, well, is it like ECS or not ECS? What's the kind of like serverless where you give the application and it runs the compute or? Yeah, for the user, yes, like you provide it. But for example, that you have like an internal tool that you're supposed to to use like for long, you could not avoid it so far. And so you need to put it online for some reason. Yep, and yep. so you build the application on the app stream. Yep. And so you just provide the, the and so the user log it. Yep. And so it has the application running there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, so to your point then, because you were trying to build detection for app stream, maybe a good segue is, what are some of the foundational pieces? Because people listening to this going, sounds like a great idea, Rodrigo, but where am I even starting? What are some of the building blocks for, say, building detection for services that are not your traditional EC2 or SV bucket? Yeah, and so, uh, as I used to do with everything I, I try to do, like I start to click on everything. Yeah, okay, fair I enough. I start to figure out like what's going on. Like I used to click, 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 click and look and try to go to the cloud tray to see what's going on. Like since like my main goal is to have the the, the events that yep. are being generated. And, and so I start to understand the workflow of the app stream, how stuff works. I start to test, I start to create something more real, yep. try to talk to people. And and when when, when I, I have that, I start to, okay, now let's simulate this kind of threads that I, I used to map yeah. and figure out what's going on. And so, like, uh, we uh, I'm going to talk better on the presentation at B-Sites and DEF with more details, the slides oh, yeah. that yeah. make more sense than... I would definitely recommend checking out the DEF CON talk that Rodrigo's doing this year at Cloud Village. Cloud Village and B-Sites. Yeah. Yeah. I think as part of your research, you found certain obvious, uh, what was it, things that you thought should not have existed. I think we spoke over a couple of them as well in terms of the information not provided enough Do you want to go into a bit more of that as well or like in terms of the app stream space what was your biggest gotcha like what was the biggest yeah. challenge in that, that, that? I, I did the research like if you look at the research like it, it seems mostly like an offensive research but well like as i mentioned like we want to try to make blue team detection great again so you yep, yep. need to try to do the research they are doing before they do so yeah i my my main goal was like okay i have those scenarios yeah and so using those scenarios how it would create detection and 
and most important, like uh, coming back to the, the previous, like you have the village. So, okay, I have the cloud trace log read. Now I have detections for the actions that's related to those malicious stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the second, right, now I need to, to create some incident response playbook and what kind of problem I could possibly have. Right. And, and so I started to discover some things, like there is some events that has a, a lot of hidden information, so you could not do anything. So you need to be ready like, to go to the API and use some, some other commands, some other calls to figure out what's going on there. Because uh, it could be like a trigger, but you, you could not answer the incident if that, that's part of the incident. Oh, uh, right. Wait, so to your point then, because I am coming back to the whole building foundation piece as well, so it sounds like you, you definitely need some kind of good IAM, good logging as well. Because I think not everything is logged in CloudTrail as well, right? Oh yeah, there, there, there is two parts. Like most of important parts are probably being logged. Yeah, but yeah, the, logging the, the is more important. The control plane, you talk about creating the structure and yeah. so on. But there is another problem. When I'm trying to simulate the situation and see like what's going on, yeah. I need to make sure that I could uh, respond to the incident. I have all the information I need. Yeah. And, and then some, a lot of times you need a data events too. And so when I'm doing this kind of test, I have the answer if I need like just the cloud trail or I need to enable more logging. Oh, and, right. and, and this is cool because a lot of basic things like S3, S3 for example, uh, they doesn't log the data events by default. Oh, they doesn't? No, no. So if somebody go to your buckets and download something, it's not logged. What? Yeah, it's not logged. Wait, so you, you see lie or console? No, both. Both. Like, both. If you, if you make your, your bucket public and you don't have the data events being saved, yeah. you, you never see, you never know who access the data. Oh, wait, so all the data bridges that happen where, oh, my S3 bucket, all the data is gone, technically, if they don't have the data event logging, they cannot see someone's downloaded the document. No, because like, especially the get and the put object is just log on the data plane events. Oh. If you delete, if you delete the bucket, it will show, because the right. the bucket it's a piece of on the on the cloud part. Right. Wow. Okay. That was... And so the data events like uh, Matthew Fuller did a, a great blog post like three years ago, something like that. Right. Right. He listed like. Um, Almost a hundred service and, and how the the data data events mostly are enabled or not enabled. Right. Okay. And so like you, and then how you enable that. Because another very simple that I read had problems, like if you use the RDS. Yep. RDS the database, right? And so if somebody goes there, delete something, insert something, update something, if you don't have the audit log, you have no information. And it's disabled by default. <laughs> because it's noise. Right. And okay. so like you need and as a, that's what I mentioned like in the past, like you need to have a thread modeling, understand how how the attacker arrived yep. to the data asset, yep. and all the information you could have on that, and now you really need to, to respond to incidents. So you need yep. to be yep. ready, yep. because that's the problem. Most of them, they are not ready. Like, they, okay, they don't have detection, that's okay. Yep. But they, they must have the logs to do some incident response if something happened. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and so, actually that's like taking a step back and coming back to the beginning of being proactive and talking about don't detection, so cheerful point then the more I hear from you the more I'm going okay so people because a lot of everyone would have a detection team right okay. I guess yeah. why not like practical for everyone to have a detection team a dedicated Rodrigo waiting over there oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you I mean what do you normally recommend people want to give it a shot and to think about scenarios What's a good place to start? Is there a cheat sheet of some sort, or do you blog about this? If 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 you have nothing ready to go, like uh, it's, they have some repositories where they have some some rules that could be a start. Yeah. Like uh, you have like uh, Sigma rules. Okay. Sigma. They have some cloud detection stuff. They have right. Out, just a few detections. Some are are terrible. Like if you put in your environment, or you to trigger as crazy. Right. But it's a beginning. If you know nothing, that's a beginning. Like you need to understand. Like if for sure you're not go put something in production before you test, right? Right, right. I mean, I might, I might put those links in the show notes and as well because I think that'd be great content for yeah. people trying to start. Yeah, detection, detection, elastic detection. They have some rules there. Right. There is some good research for. Oh, I don't know if I 
say I will say his name correctly, but uh, Timothy Orr. Okay, yeah, Tim it, Timothy Orr, yeah. Yeah, I think from Accenture. Yeah, I think he has a, a good repository. Okay. For using Athena to find some great stuff like okay. it's more generic. Right. Most uh, a lot of things are generic, but it's pretty pretty cool because they focus on create stars, update stars that works on most of the service. Right. Uh, so, see, you know, you kind of raised a good point because. Even that is still a starting point. So yeah. you would still need to kind of think about, spend time and think about what's the scenario that's relevant for you, yourself. Yeah, like if I'm building something from scratch, yeah. what, what I would do, like, I will map the service I have, I will map the service, there is some good detections, yeah. and and the service that I have no idea what's going on, yeah. and I will lock. Let's yeah. let's 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 say that I could do a SCP deny, like service that's not listed here, could not be, so, I will decrease my attack surface. Yeah. And so from there, I'll pick out the service and do the, the same same approach. Like let's click, let's figure out like some opportunities and this kind of things. Yeah, yeah. And and another another good suggestion, like if you have some bases on I am this kind of thing, there is like no one has a good list on actions that has passed role. So this kind of permissions yeah. probably could cause more, more, more. How can I say? Make, make it complex or make it harder. Make, make more, make. More oh. sense? Oh, I forgot the word. <laughs> oh, make it easier? It, it, the, the incident could be rules, like, oh, it, because like that action is so dangerous with pass role. Because if you have a rule associated, yeah, you have the permission and probably have the I am, I am. Privilege and so this kind of things could point you to some place that you should create a detection. Oh, right. So to find scenarios for creating detection is oh yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean it, it will give you inspiration for it as well. Yeah, a lot of ways to see it, but but focus on the service you have, like yeah, because yeah. maybe you don't use any of the service that has pass role, and so that's okay. You don't yeah, need to take yeah. a look at that. And so it's just giving general ideas like yeah. So maybe first step is to identify what is commonly used services, but AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, doesn't matter which one. Yeah. Once you've identified that, then you kind of go into what scenarios would I think are scenarios that I want a detection rule for. And a good tip, like if you don't have like a big team and don't have like a lot of guys using Great Daddy, could help a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because I, they have detections there. It's not perfect. It's not covering all the servers, but they have some some form of detection. The, 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 the most common stuff that's going on, they have there. Uh, so that could be a good start. Well, that was very awesome, man. I mean, that was all the questions I had, but this was really awesome for me. Thanks so much for coming in, man. <laughs> right, where, where can people find you, by the way? Where can people find you on the internet? Oh, okay. I'm I'm on on LinkedIn. I'm a Spooker for Diego Montoro as Spooker Lab on Twitter and mostly that's where how do you say bye in Portuguese and have a good day ciao thank you ciao like a ciao <laughs> hey, thanks so much man I appreciate this okay thank you man that's pretty good I really liked it